Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the glory of Christ. As you can see, I moved to Spokane. <laughs> this is my new apartment, and um, it's a beautiful apartment. Let me take a look at it. There's a the kitchen, just the living room, and go around here. There's a bedroom right there that you go. And it's a one bedroom apartment, but it's close to my wife. <laughs> and that's what's important. So I'm living in Spokane now. <laughs> and that's a tremendous blessing. Brothers and sisters, um, Today, what do I want to talk about today? Well, today, there's a lot of things to talk about um, that we could talk about, of course, but um, um, I want to talk about perseverance. Perseverance and um, determination. Perseverance and determination, even if we're living in a world that that doesn't abide by your precepts or your your truth. Um, You know, obviously, when Joseph Smith had his vision, nobody believed him, <laughs> except for his parents, you know. And nobody believed him except for his parents. And when he was commanded to do a work that God commanded him to do, he didn't have the whole world at his, at his knees. No, he didn't. You know, he had he had very few followers at the very beginning, and uh, but and that's the way that, that that's the way that we want to realize is that even though even though there may be very few followers. In our life, you know, I'll just give you an example. We have missionaries going out on missions at times, and some are very successful, and some probably might have one baptism their whole mission. Does it mean that their their message is true? No. Does it mean that they're without skill and talent? No. <laughs> you know. Um, Sometimes maybe that one person that they convert will do an extremely good and extraordinary thing that maybe that all the people that that maybe could have been called to serve would have done and uh I'll give you an example of this in the Book of Mormon. Um, Abinadi. Abinadi was a very talented man. He was a very gifted prophet. Very powerful prophet. And he was commanded to go to the King Noah and say to King Noah, Repent or perish. You know, repent or perish. Um, in the Book of Mormon, Kino happened to be a man that that had many wives and concubines, and he was com committing great whoredoms with his with his um, with his concubines, and uh, you know, was it you know, and he was the king. <laughs> He was the king, and he was not only the king, but he and his priest 
were doing these things and the people's eyes were blinded because the people thought, oh my goodness, well this is the king and they're doing this, so it must be okay because they're the priests, you know. And uh, no, that wasn't the case, you know. It's not, it's never okay. It's never okay to break the law of chastity. It's never okay to do things that may be popular in the eyes of the world, but distasteful in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord cannot look upon sin with the least of allowance, but he that repents and then does the commandment shall be forgiven. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's the way that life really is, you know, that's the way life is. And, you know, if we keep the commandments after repentance, then we have the opportunity to um, be forgiven fully and completely. And that's how beautiful repentance is. Repentance is the most ennobling gift that we have in the gospel, I think. You know, the gift and the ability to be able to repent. The gift and the ability to be able to put behind us our mistakes. Because what does the Lord say? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, I, I think there's not even, not even the prophet goes without repenting in his life, you know. And uh, those that say they have no sin make God a liar. You know, like it says in the New Testament, you know, so we all have need to repent. We have all need to to be sanctified more than what we really are, you know, and and um, does it have to be outstanding? No, it doesn't have to be outstanding, but it's got to be done with grace, good mercies and truth. And I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that repentance is probably one of the most ennobling and enabling powers that, that God has extended to his children. You know, the ability to repent refines us. The ability to repent cleanses us. The ability to repent makes us better people. If we repent and we confess on our sins, we can't prosper. You know, we can't know. God can do no no miracle if if we are if we are hiding behind our sins, you know. And sometimes when we when people feel that they can't they can't prosper or that they can't do anything, it's because you know I'm not saying this in in all cases, you know. But but if we truly want to prosper, if we truly want to um, come out from beneath, then there's times that we need to repent. And repentance is a joyous occasion and it's needed by all, <laughs> okay? And I, I want, don't want you to think that in any way or shape or form that just because you, you need to repent that there's something wrong with you. No, not at all. Not at all. You know, um, President Nelson gave a fantastic talk one time, and it was on repentance. And he said, "A converted, a converted heart is a." I'll say that again. A converted heart is a repented heart, and a repented heart, a converted heart. You know, and. Um, So a converted heart is a repented heart, and a repentant heart a converted heart. So part of conversion and part of the changing process and part of the workings is by allowing the atonement to work through us and in us and part and, and be part of us that will allow us to bound in God's love, that will bound, bound in God's mercy, and that is part of the plan of happiness. Repentance can be truly joyous. Or it can be extremely bitter, you know, depending upon how we we use that process. 
you know, and um, as we we feel God's divine providence and his tentacles reaching out to us, um, do we do we use repentance as an escape route to abandoning God's love, or do we use repentance as a as a power, as ability, as a tool for more righteousness and for, for the ability to continue to learn and to prosper. You know, God's laws will never change. God will never change. The world and the world alone changes. You know, the world alone changes, but God God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will never change. He will never, his laws will never, will, will remain unchanged from day to day. I'll cast my burden on the Lord and bear a song away is, is what the hymn says. And that's the way we got to look at it, you know. You know, we, we repent, we're refined, and then we, we have joy, peace, comfort, and happiness. And there is no greater power. There's no greater tool. There's no greater blessing than the need to repent. There's no greater blessing than the need to forgive. And there's no greater blessing than the need to um, love our loved ones, you know. And, you know, and if, if you feel that you're in a tough situation, because a lot of people are, you know, one thing about the gospel is there's a lot of people that don't want to go with you, you know. And then there may be a lot of people that want to go with you. It just depends, you know. It doesn't mean that we don't stop loving them. It doesn't mean that we stop loving them. You know, we keep trying, but if if you feel that that your your covenant pathway is a lonely road, you know the road to the celestial kingdom is a rarely walked road, as the convenience and the comfort of the world is concerned. But it is a path of truth. It is a path of righteousness. It is a path of 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 godliness and good works. And it is the path of of true righteousness to true uh, obedience and true truth. You know, the covenant pathway is the path that leads us back to our Heavenly Father. And if we want to obey the Lord, then we need to repent. If we want to keep the commandments, we need to repent. <laughs> you know, if we want to obey the Lord, you know, we, we, we hearken to the commandments. And God will always provide a way to help us be cleansed, to be healed, and to be sanctified and purified through the process, you know. And I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that, um, that repentance is a true and ennobling blessing. It's a true ennobling because it allows us to prosper and to progress. It allows us to set aside our inclinations and put our trust on the in the Lord. And I shall testify these things, brothers and sisters, and I lead you with my witness that these things are true. Um, and I do so in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brothers and sisters, um, stay on the covenant pathway, keep the commandments, Love the Lord, serve the Lord in righteousness and truth, and you will never, ever go astray, you know. You know, we, there are things to act and things to be acted upon in life. 
There's things that allow us to abandon the God knowledge, goodness, mercy of the Lord. And there's things that retard us from that, that privilege. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you got to ask yourself, you know, if, if, if this is God, <laughs> if this is God, and if this is what God's work is all about, should I uh, continue in it, or should I repent, or should I um, continue boasting in my own strength? You know, that, and that's one thing that we have to be careful of, I think is boasting our own strength, boasting our own abilities. You know, God gives us great abilities. God gives us great power and great um, strength as we abandon the gospel of Christ, you know. And and if we keep the commandments and as we obey the Lord, We can't go wrong. We can't go wrong because uh, Christ loves us, you know. Christ loves us and uh, we love him. And uh, because we love him, you know, we we abound in the love, light, glory, and majesty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, even though it can be a lo lonely road on the pathway of, of truth, you know, we, we continue to keep the commandments. We continue to obey the Lord. And we continue to keep His laws and His precepts. You know, and uh, and as we do those things, brothers and sisters, I, I testify to you that that no matter how hard life may be at times, or how easy it may be at times, or if everything is going great, doesn't mean anything's wrong. You know, and uh, you know, you know the. The Gospel Covenant path is a path of of joy, it's a path of peace, it's a path of of um, comfort, it's a path of um, blessings, it's a path of knowledge, it's a path of, of wisdom, it's a path of truth, it's a path of agency it's a path of it's a path of many things you know and, and as we abide in God's love and his gospel we're bound in Christ you know and you know Christ is within the kingdom of God is within and, and if you look at the, the Old Testament the New Testament I mean I believe it's the New Testament but it says the kingdom of Christ is within you. And then if you look at that, it says the kingdom of Christ. And then the footnotes, it says the kingdom of Christ is among you. You know, and, uh, you know, either way, the kingdom of Christ is with us. You know, it surrounds us, it's with us, and it's always with us. You know, and, uh, um, So, that being said, I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that, that Christ lives, that he loves us, that he's our king, he's our ruler, he's our protector, he's our savior, redeemer, he's our everlasting king. And as we abound in Christ, we abound in him. As we abound in Christ, we abound in his love, in his in His true majesty, glory, power, and dominion. And, um, you know, we, we, 
We live according to his precepts. We live according to his laws. We live according to his priesthood. And uh, and you have to understand, though, brothers and sisters, that when I'm I'm saying these things, you know, um, when I'm saying these things, I'm I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. You know, any more than I'm pointing fingers at myself at times, and uh, and um, but God's gospel is real. It, it works. You know, God's gospel is true. It works. God's gospel is 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 marked by the path of agency. As marked by the path of truth, righteousness, and peace, and uh, can it be thorny at times? Sure, it can. It can be very thorny at times, and other times it may be very, 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 uh, very, very uh, joyous and 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 fruitful. And why is that? Why is that? Because because we are pioneers. We are pioneers of the Lord's kingdom. We are pioneers wherever we go. And we're pioneers in our own right. And we're pioneers in, in the gospel right. And as we abound in God's love, as we obey the promptings that come to us, as we act accordingly, you know, our priesthood is magnified. You know, as we testify of Christ, as we keep his commandments, as we keep his laws, as we, we walk in obedience to his, king, to, to his laws of truth, goodness, and righteousness, we find that we are in the love of the Lord. We are in the love of our Savior, you know, and... Uh, we enter God's rest. Does does God rest mean that we'll ever have trials again? No, no. But um, His rest is something that allows us to walk in the peace, knowledge, comfort, and the goodness, truth, mercy, and love of Jesus Christ. As we obey His prophets, as we obey His our teachers, our rulers, our king. And we obey the laws of his kingdom. We abound in the love, majesty, glory, light, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I so testify of these things, brothers and sisters. I so testify of a loving God. I so testify of his blessings, of his precepts, of his truth, majesty, might power and dominion. And I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that Christ will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never lead it, leave us alone without knowledge. And as, as we abound in him, we find that we can abound in all things, you know. And when we are on his errand, we are titled to his help. You know, when we're on his errand, we're titled to his, to his love and his precepts. And I so testify to you these things, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Have a wonderful day. Um, keep abounding God's love. Um, like I said, this is the glory of Christ. Uh, if you're interested in and learning more about the things that I share and the things that I do, uh, um, you can go to Amazon, look up Latigo and uh, Latigo Duncan. That's L A D D I E G O Duncan D U N C A N. 
and look at the the books I publish. I publish fifteen books, and they're they're a very good variety now. And and uh, I I encourage you to look at those books, and and there's there's information concerning each one, and and um, you know I encourage you to look at those because those books are good books. They're good books. There are books that will allow you to abound in the love, light, knowledge, and the glory of Christ. And as we keep God's commandments, as we obey his teachings, as we repent of our sins, as we keep the commandments, as we abound in his love and his grace and his mercy and truth, we abound in him. And I so testify these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day, brothers and sisters. It's so good to be in Spokane. It's so good to be closer to my wife. And um, I will be giving you updates on on the progress that I'm making up here. And, and hopefully we'll be able to do the things that we would like to do and as that we'll like to have happen. And uh, I so testify of these things, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Keep, keep, um, keep abounding in hope. Keep abounding in God's love. Keep abounding in God's truth, mercy, and grace. And as you do, you will find that you, have, you will never go astray. And I so testify of these things, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming here. And thank you for taking the time to to come here. Um, God loves you. I love you. And so do all the hosts of heaven. Um, you are a child of God of infinite worth. You are a child of God of, of infinite value. Infinite, infinite, infinite value, infinite um, truth, infinite love and infinite mercy and and God loves you you know and uh, because he loves you he will bless you he will strengthen you and never be afraid to, to lift up your voice you know if you're on the Lord's errand you're entitled to the Lord's help and the Lord will never reject you he will never the Lord will never reject you you know doesn't mean the world won't. You know, the world, the world is not God. <laughs> you know, God is in the world, and He works with other people, and He works in different mysterious ways, as He does. But um, you know, God is a God of truth, a God of love, and a God of mercy and truth. And uh, never, never feel that. You're too good or too bad to be a child of God, because you're not. You're you're of divine, divine truth, of divine precepts, and always know, brothers and sisters, always know. No matter how hard you try, you know there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be there's going to be. Um, There's been mistakes, and and I think one of the things about the world, and I'll share, just share one more thing, and then I'll close, is that in the world we we live in a world that um, that has a system of belief, that has a system of of understanding and knowledge, and we live in we're living in the last days, you know, where, where all things shall be gathered together in one. And, um, you know, we just got to remember, you know, brothers and sisters, that, that us being the Latter-day Warriors, sometimes our Latter-day Warriors is, is not just battles with, with the world, but it's our own battle. Our own battle with the natural man, our own battle with with the precepts of the gospel, our own battle with with truth, our own battle with with our testimony. Are we going to keep our testimony? Are we going to reject it? Are we going to go with the world? Or are we going to go with God? And 
you know, one way that we go with God is we keep the commandments. We, we set our hearts on the things of truth, righteousness and sacredness and holiness. And by doing those things, brothers and sisters, we abound in the love, light, love, majesty, and dominion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the, one of the greatest records that we have and, and the glory of Christ and the, and the Church of Jesus Christ the Latter-day Saints back up totally and completely is the Book of Mormon. You know, the Book of Mormon is, is a book written for our day. It was written by a prophet historian, Joseph Smith, I mean, by Mormon. It was written by a prophet historian, Mormon. Joseph Smith was a prophet of the latter days that was chosen to to translate the Book of Mormon that was written in Reformed Egyptian. But Mormon was a prophet. He was a, a prophet historian in, in many, many years ago. And uh, he saw our day. He saw the troubles that were on the earth. He saw the, the powers of darkness and the things that 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 enshroud men and there's no greater powerful witness I, I i believe than the book of mormon you know the glory of christ that probably doesn't hold a candle to that book you know and i i testify that i testify that with all my heart you know i served a mission in 2000 1993 and 94 and um, I got to testify that book and um, at the time I was testifying that book I just did not in any small or large way really understand the significance of what I was doing really at that time in my life I believe but the Book of Mormon is a powerful, powerful witness. There is no, you know, Joseph Smith even said this. He said, there's no other book that is more, um, let me see. There's no other book that is, is more correct than the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is the most correct book of any book on the earth. You know, even if you read the Bible or the Old Testament and New Testament, you know, the Book of Mormon was written that a righteous seed, Lehi's seed, or Lehi, the first prophet of the Book of Mormon, um, a righteous seed, and Lehi was a descendant of Joseph, the son of Jacob, the son of Israel. Um, a stem of Joseph would would stem from from Jerusalem and travel through the wilderness as a as a small group of people build a ship and travel to the Americas and there the Lord gave Lehi and his seed the um, the promised land the promised land that that God promised to his people, that God promised to us, of which we are living in at this time. And, uh, you know, we are living in a promised land. We are living in, in, in that wonderful, wonderful uh, blessing of living in a land that is covered with people, but also a land that's covered with, with, um, with good things and bad things, you know, and um, but the Lord said that that He would not allow anybody, not anyone, come to this country, unless they were they came by the power of God, and that just lets you know that that the caliber of the people that are in the Americas is is that every person that comes to this land is a is a potential a potential and uh, honest seeker of truth 
you know, potential honor seeker of, and potential honor seeker of righteousness and truth. And as we abound in God's love, as we abound in God's mercy, as we abound in God's laws and commandments, and as we do the things that God wants us to do, we will abound in God's love. We will abound in God's precepts, and we will abound in God's laws and precepts. And as we are not afraid to lift our voice, but to testify of Christ, and to testify of His kingdom, and testify of our Master, and give glad tidings great joy, you know, just like it says in the Book of Mormon, how great are the feet of those that bring good tidings of good things, that, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth, you know. And uh, that's what we're doing. You know, that's what the glory of Christ is all about, is to bring glad tidings of great news, great joy, and great, great joy to a world that is, that is, uh, that to some degree or another is suffering from the problems of destitution and and corruption and and uh, as we abound in in the love of the Lord and as we stay on the covenant pathway as we stay in the scriptures you know and I testify to that I've been reading the scriptures lately more than I have in the past you know especially the book of Mormon I do read the scriptures all the time I mean you're wrong but I've been I've been reading the book of Mormon per se more than I have for a little while and that book I testify that there's no greater witness there's no greater testimony than any book of the of ever written than the book of Mormon and uh no other book does justice to that book, you know, and I testify, and I don't mean to say that the Bible's not true, the Bible is filled with truth, and the Old Testament is a wonderful book, and the New Testament is a wonderful book, and the the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and Pro Great Price, We are just so blessed to have these books, to have these records, to have these testaments, you know, to have these teachings and to have these things at the palms of our hands that we can lift, read, and, and take in and breathe the light of life into our life, you know, the, the knowledge of truth the knowledge of wisdom and understanding, the knowledge and precepts of, of, of Jesus Christ and his gospel, you know, and it's vitally important that we do that. It's vitally important that we stay on the covenant path, as President, Mon President Nelson said, you know, and I can testify to you, brothers and sisters, that as, you, as we do that, God will lift us up. God will make us bet more than what we've ever been before. And, um, so anyway, I know this has been a long talk. I know that I've been talking for almost 40 minutes. And, uh, um, but there's so much in my soul. There's so much in my heart that I want to share. And if I could, I could probably talk for, for a long time yet. But I testify to you, brothers and sisters, as you abound in God's love. And how do we abound in God's love? We we read the scriptures. We we listen to servants of God. We listen to the core of Christ. We listen to the the, the Latter Day prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter Day Saints. We keep the commandments. We keep our covenants. We keep the precepts and laws of God. And as we do those things, brothers and sisters, God will will love bless and serve us and he will he will allow us to bound love agency and power might agency power might and dominion of our lord and savior jesus christ and so testify these things to you that god lives that god's goodness is stands approved and changed from day to day i'll cast my burden at his feet and bear song away you know there's no other, no greater good that we can do than to rely 
on the rock of our salvation, the true source of our salvation, the true rock of Jesus Christ. And I so testify of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, keep abounding God's love and he'll keep abounding your love. Keep serving God. As you serve God, God will bless you as you serve him. And he will reward you with some of the most divine and ennobling blessings that you have never, ever witnessed in your life, you know. And as you serve the Lord, as you serve the Lord, as you, as you begin your own ministry, as you begin your own teachings, as you begin your own, your own ministry, um, I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that God will bless you. God will give you light, knowledge, and truth. And you will grow in the knowledge and wisdom of Him who created all things, even the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I testify these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day, brothers and sisters. And I look forward to, to keeping you updated with my relationship with my wife. I look forward to um, updating you with the progress of the glory of Christ and in, in the covenant gospel pathway that that we are on. And I so testify these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep abounding God's love and he'll keep abounding your love. And keep abounding God's light and you will abound in his love and his light. And the ones that you love will abound in your light and your love. I so testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day, brothers and sisters. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.